Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. And this is The Thunder Show, AKA The Internet's 17th most talked about wine internet television program. And today, we are going to be talking about Washington State Premium Wines. I think all of you know what I think about Washington State Wines. They are some of the most profound, elegant, and monstrous efforts in the world. I'm a huge fan of their wines, and uh, today we have several wines from Columbia Valley, and one wine from Walla Walla, and no, that's not a joke, that is probably the most up and coming serious area in the world. Um, we will resume Friday episodes on the laid back couch, Mom, just zoom over there so they can see what's going on. It's been used to like storage, and it's a mess over there, so um, that's been really the big issue and the big problem with no laid back Fridays, and trust me, I'm more upset than you are. As much as you love Laid Back Friday, one wine, two wines laying on that couch makes it a lot of fun. But we're gonna fight through, work hard, and focus on Washington State wines today because really Washington State is on the verge of becoming this country's most predominant premium producer, PQ'd, of red wines. I, I'm a big fan of what's going on in Washington State and we're gonna start right off the bat with uh, one of the legendary wines from Columbia Valley, uh, our good friends at Woodward Cannon in 2004, Artist Series number 13. I'm surprised they didn't skip 13. You know, in, in New York City, none of the buildings have a 13th floor, Mott. I do that. It's a fun fact. Fun fact. Link that up. 2004, Woodward Canyon, Cabernet, 93 points, J. Miller, 29 US dollars, and 29 is the number of Jets 2007 MVP, Leon Washington. Unbelievable running back from Florida State, which we got with the Herm Edwards pick, Mott. And he is a future star. I mean, I don't think people realize how good he really is. Anyway, Cabernet Woodward Canyon, great producer. Big time producer. One of the first producers that I remember back with Leonetti and Quesita Creek in the early 90s when I started really realizing that Washington State was not just Columbia Crest. Um, really excited about trying this wine. So let's get right into it. There is some color. It's red. I enjoy that. You like that little, that was cool, right? It was like coming out, it's like 3D. Did you put your 3D glasses on today, folks? Snippy snip time. Really interesting gravel, very, it, actually. There is like a, a, a roasted peppers, tomato soup, kind of like a gourmet Eli's soup that costs you $9 and all you have to do is put it in the microwave. Um, kind of action going on in the nose here. There's some black cherry, you also get some beautiful, Red cassis coming through on the nose. Little hints of oak, uh, also some inkiness uh, coming through as well, like pen ink coming through. There's also some sort of uh, awkward nose. Can't get it, let's give it a whirl. a bombastic wine with heavy levels of tannins coming through. Still coming across very young. I mean, heavy layers of vanilla, uh, little hints of cedar. I get some cherry cola aspects on this wine as well, which are actually cu quite refined and, and appreciated. I enjoy that. Wow, big wine, extremely structured. Um, massive, massive dark flavors. Interesting wine. Um, to me, it's a wine that you need to know what you're getting yourself into. With so many wines, you've got to recognize that you're getting it, you have to really know what you're getting yourself into. And this is a wine that I just think is way too young for its own good. And as you know, I don't often say that, even though it's mainly true, but this is really over the top, heavy on tannins. And, and structure and tightness. I think this wine will open up over the next four to six years. Right now I find this wine to be a 90 point effort, I like it. Um, but some of the flavors are muted and tight and hibernating. A little Yogi Bear action going on on this wine. Um, but a wine that I think has, has big potential and I'd love to see cellared for four, five, six years to see it open up and really show 
some of the beauty. I think this is an awkward 14, 15 year old, really skinny and tall teenager that at 19 you're like, my God, that is a model. That's what this wine has a potential to be. So it's a 90 point wine today with 95 point potential if the fruit opens up and matches the length, the body, the structure. So a wine that I would really roll the dice on. This is the kind of wine, eighth grade boys, if you're paying attention now, of course you're not drinking, but if you're watching for some unknown reason, you need to focus in on these tall, skinny, awkward girls. You make your move, you get in there, be friends, five, six, eight, Mott, I know that's your move, that's the way you do it. Mott, link it up, keep that in your mind. 14, 15, awkward, skinny, they swan out. 1920, you're a hero. Just remember, Uncle Gary told you. Let's move on. Nicholas Cole Camille, 2003, uh, Washington State blend, 47%. Cabernet, 38% Merlot, 15% Cab Franc, 38 US dollars, 93 points wine and spirits, 91 points wine enthusiast. So some nice press for this wine out the bat. Uh, this we just got in, so I'm excited about trying this. We've carried this wine in past vintages and I've been a fan. I have definitely been a fanboy of Nicholas Cole wines. I think they've been making some great efforts, some beautiful dark structure and great color. Now listen, so many of you are going to uh, Napa Valley and Sonoma. I will now make this my big statement. Going into 2008, instead of going to Napa or Sonoma, make a trip to Washington State wine country, Columbia Valley, and especially if you can get out to Walla Walla. What is going on in these areas is revolutionary and exciting because there's not as many wineries. They really need to make super wine because they can't go on the cachet of Napa or California, so they have to work for their sales, and what that's doing is creating enormously interesting wines. and. Wines that I really think are bringing money for the value, bang for buck. I mean, these are expensive wines. First wine was 29 bucks. I thought it was a value. $38 on this Camille. Next one's 25 and next is 36. We're talking about premium wines here, but again, if they were flopped into Napa with this kind of press and this kind of quality and pedigree, these wines would be 50, 60, 70 dollar wines. Don't get it twisted. It's all about marketing and branding in America and Washington State for the next 60 months, I think you can pull off some great values, but there's no chance, and I'm even thinking 36 months, we're gonna be hard pressed to even that, even these producers, we were getting for 10, 15% less a little while ago. So they're moving quickly, get on the train before it's completely left the yard. 38 bones, let's give it a sniffy sniff. Now this has a really interesting nose. I get a really nice nutmeg component coming through in the nose. I get beautiful. I mean, gorgeous, round, fresh raspberry fruit coming through. Jammy, just explosive. Little hints of tar bubbles. Bloop. You know you did it when it was hot in the summer and they just paved the road. Gorgeous tar kind of components coming through on the nose as well. Very pretty. Let's give it a whirl. Weird. Wow, so interesting. Wild. This wine has one of the most, did you see the speech in this? Well, I can't even speak. This wine takes one of the biggest turns off the road that I've had in a wine in a long time. Very fruit oriented, it goes really strawberry and, and cherries and really delicious and then bam, I mean, I mean on cue, as it hits the mid palate, it gets very tight and tart. I get a really sour, sour component ripping through my palate like a Tasmanian devil and then shooting out spurts of milk and dark chocolate with a vegetal kick. So imagine the chocolate and you're like, mmm, chocolate and then broccoli and asparagus and lettuce ripping and dancing through your entire palate after you just went through a fruit bomb component. Very different. Heavy on the tins as well. Another structured, solid, backbone-driven red wine. That kick to the transition makes it a very tannic and bitter finish and would really make a lot of people shy off from this wine and actually like it until the finish. And if you don't know anything, it's like a movie. If you don't finish strong, even if it was great, you're gonna lose. 
You can win 11 rounds of boxing, but if you get your ass knocked down to 12th, you lost. And this wine, like any other wine, really needs to rely on its finish to make the common general public enjoy it. And I think this finish is too controversial, too difficult, and too tight, and too awkward, and too vegetal to really get a lot of people super excited about it. I, on the other hand, like it for a lot of those reasons, but to me, this is a 90-point wine because I do believe that this is broken towards the end. I think it has a poor finish, even though it's spectacular in the beginning. Pretty tough. I mean, it's the Meldrick Taylor, Julio Cesar Chavez fight. Meldrick Taylor dominated for all those rounds and get knocked out with eight seconds light. Now listen, Richard Steele was an idiot for calling off the fight, but there's no Richard Steele here, and I'm calling off the fight. I'm gonna take the uh, place of the bald black referee at this moment and tell you that this wine really rocks until that last taste that I think is gonna turn off the majority of you. If you can deal with tannins, if you drink really big, tight, structured wines, then you can give this a world. Otherwise, this is a wine that tails off. And again, I'm gonna score 90 points because I like it, I really like the vegetal kick, but this is a very tricky wine, a wine that I think a lot of people would not like. Let's move on. I got fired up there a little bit, Mott. It was interesting, that's why. It's an interesting wine. All right, now we're dealing with a winery a lot of you know. Uh, this is Chateau Saint-Michel, but this is our high end, the Ethios level, 14.7% Syrah from uh, Columbia Valley as well. Um, 25 US dollars, which is Kerry Rhodes Hollywood. It's number, best player in the secondary in the AFC besides Ed Reed. 92 points wine spectator, and uh, Syrah has been flourishing, my friends, in Washington State, so let's see what's going on here. Again, gorgeous color, but that's never been an issue. Sniffy sniff time. A Little bit of leather coming through, a little bit of raspberry jam coming through, but aromatically, it's defunct a little bit, so I'm a little bit worried about this. I'm not super happy with the aromatics on this wine whatsoever. I do get a little coffee pot action coming through. Little leather, little red jam, but really kind of subdue and subtle and really you'd have to get in there. So aromatically, I'm a little bit disappointed. Let's give it a whirl. You like that mod, huh? I'm gonna give this wine a pass. Um, I actually find it to be very one-dimensional, little fruit punch, King's brand fruit punch. Um, sorry, that was fun. Um, it's, it's kind of just very boring. Wow, God, Spectator, 92 points. Um, I feel like I can find this wine for $12 in Australia like that, anytime I want. I'm completely in disagreement with the wine spectator on this wine. I'm gonna score this wine 87 points. I find it to be very average. Yesterday's show, we uh, we had a $7 Australian Shiraz that I think is as good as this wine, if not a slightly better. Uh, I'm gonna give this wine a major pass, throw up eight Z's, SS Chris, on Gary's scores. And uh, let's just move on. This is really not much to say. It's very awkward, off balance, disjointed, one dimensional. Um, and a, a wine that is very disappointing, actually, which is really too bad. Boring. It's just boring. And finally, Cougar Crest 2003 Reserve Syrah from Walla Walla. 92 points, Wine Spectator. A 92 point Wine Spectator Syrah from Washington. A little nervous. 36 US dollars. Let's see what's going on here. 36, which is about a, the amount of months we've still got until Washington State pricing is out of control and unbearable. Cougar Crest. So this is going to appeal to all you tough guys who've got, you know, Tasmanian Devil tattoos or the barbed wire. Tell me right now if you've got the barbed wire. Don't lie. Mott. You, Mott. If you've got the barbed wire tattoo, please leave in the comments. I just, I need to know. It's not a negative. I just need to know. Snippy snip. See, this is beautiful. This is blueberries on a spring day. Fresh, fresh blueberries. 
while you're spraying gorgeous Febreze all around. You're eating blueberries. It's the first day of spring, folks. Spring, first day. That kind of aromatics on the nose. Tell me you've never done that. That's what you do on the first day of spring in New Jersey if you want to get shot. Anyway, let's give it a whirl. This wine rips. Wow. Black raspberries, blackberries, you know, like the really good blackberries, and blueberries. Dark fruit explosion, but comes across very quietly. Very interesting, it's like a rose in the ghetto, as they say. This comes through like a roan shatten of the pop. It's got leather, uh, it's got a little insect blood. Mm, this is good, creaminess. This is still dancing. And I'm talking like Sammy Davis Jr., not like me. Dancing on the palate. Beautiful fruit, purity, all the, who's the one? I'd love to know who made this wine because whoever did it is one working with grapefruit. Oh, is the winemaker here? Deborah. Deborah Hausen is the winemaker. And Deborah, I want to meet you because this wine is spectacular. This has beautiful passion, beautiful execution. Clearly, you were able to make the fruit express itself in this while giving it a great balance. It's kind of like, you know, your mom that lets you have freedom but puts a line in the sand, but it's a very fair line. Be home at 11.30. Don't come home at 11.30 too, you jerk. She said 11.30. That's very fair for a weekday, especially for a 16-year-old. That kind of, kind of, Boundaries is what the winemaker was able to do with this fruit. This fruit is passionate, pure and clean, but there's secondary and third tier fundamental beautiness in this wine. Leather, pepper is still dancing, very subtle, like white pepper components. I gotta drive. I get, um, you know, tobacco that you put in a pipe, leather box, cedar, um, Mm, this is good. Little hints of cinnamon. It almost reminds me of a bakery in a weird way, and I don't even know how to put my finger on that. I almost feel like I'm getting a blackberry uh, crumpet with cinnamon on it. Just gorgeousness, great mouthfeel, luscious long finish. This is rocking. I'm gonna score this wine 94 points. John Abraham, baby. Man, I hate, hate losing him. Um, 94 points, raw, just golden. I mean, just if you're, if you've got it, You've got to go out and taste these wines side by side if you want to learn the difference between Radul and Sadul because that's what's going on here. This wine is killing it and this wine is completely faking it. This is like, you know, vanilla ice versus M&M. You know, just one of those things. This is, heck, I don't even want to say it. KRS-One, Big Daddy Kane. This wine is rocking. Please seek this out. If you have any opportunity, right now, stop the video whip out the cell phone and text yourself the name of this wine because this wine is bringing serious thunder and is an absolute delight of a wine and an absolutely spectacular effort and reminds me of why I believe so much in Walla Walla because again, if I compare this to the Cinquanons and to the Pax and to the wines of that nature that are causing all the hoopla for Saran, California. It's more toned down, has a little bit more old wine world respect, a little more Chateau of the Pop Coat Roti Hermitage love to it, and it's a half, a third, or a fourth of the price. The getting is good, folks, right now. Don't miss out. That was fun. That's a great wine. It's a fun episode. Great wine, wild wine. Just interesting stuff. And tannins for days. You want to taste a wine that you want to know what wine tastes like that really needs to be put away? This is a fairly inexpensive example and a good wine to boot. Question of the day. New Year's. Resolution. What is your New Year's wine resolution? Ooh, I expect everybody to step up and give me one here. This is gonna be on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I mean, this is where you need to step up and show me it's not just bribery that gets the Vayner Nation out and leave comments, because you guys, and it was really you this year. Yeah, I was on Conan, but it was really you.
with a, a tiny, itsy, bitsy, teeny wing now. I, I may have to, you know what? There's so many of you now because you are changing the wine world. I'm gonna have to change it, Ma, because I'm really insecure. I'm like, I'm like, eh, eh, nothing. Happy New Year, safe, have fun. Drink some grower champagne, mix it up, and find this wine. Love you, Ma. Love you too. See you later.